This is actually my second attempt on doing this. The previous one was too dark, even though I am one with extremely bad low quality due to not exactly knowing if I want to improve. I still felt like, yeah, I had to lighten things up a little bit more. Hi, for those who are watching, this is the Anger and Defender Spare Reviewer, although I technically only review it in Zero until something else uh, happens in my life. So, yeah, we got Eden Zero, chapter 180 early for some reason. For me, I'm actually a bit worried about that because that seems to imply that we will not get a chapter next week. Don't take my word for it, I don't know. A nice cover page though of Klein, and we're really seeing how much she has grown, and damn, her chest has really become big. <laughs> Model thing at all. We also see a little bit deeper, or should I say, deeper into the personality that is Dead End Crow. Again, I think many people will not really like this because it won't say they will likely say, "Oh, another mindless Hiromashima villain," and I'm saying, get over it. Everyone has some kinds of writing thing. I know all. I don't know anything of. All right. I'm trying to be a writer, and I know my writing sucks. But it still is one thing I have to say about to that to y'all. And that is, some have writing things. Not everything have to be perfect writing. I know there is some structurally things in villains that make it more fun. And mindless things is, may just feel like lazy writing. But sometimes you just have to create that in order to create more interesting villains. Do, would you believe me if I say that were some people who even say that Shura was an interesting villain. Despite the fact that I felt like he was completely another scum. So it's been very clear for this entire manga. Hiro Mishima is going to write his villains a total scum. So don't complain that the villains are flat writing. It's just going to be easier to say they are meant to be that way. So what am I trying to rant about? Well, it turns out that Ian, that, that uh, Dead and Crow basically killed every single human uh, collabor collaborator by stomping on the facility. Apparently not even being sure that they were there. They're saying 99 dead, one missing. That seems to imply that all of them are dead and that one missing is of course Connor. For me, that terrifies me a little bit because that seems to imply that he didn't know that the humans were there until after Connor escaped. Mm, although I'm not sure. It's also worth noting here that um, yes, like which wizard talks to Siggy with respectful words, calling him Lord Siggy, informing him that Crow have done have killed them all. This does not please. Uh, this does not please. Uh, Siggy, even though he wants to rule over all mankind, it's clear that he has a very pragmatic uh, villain vision when it comes to it. Yes, he will eradicate humanity and destroy them, but he also intends to utilize what they have to steal it in order to create more superior life forms that then can kill humans. So, unlike Crow or many others, he is not mindless killing, he is uh, strategic, strategic killing. It is also shown he still has his wormhole as he teleports right up towards Dead and Crow and talks to him. It does seem though that Crow actually fears Siggy, or at least is respectful enough to not even talk back to him. He's saying that uh, he was amused of the human pets, but um, Siggy called them humans with respective skills that he needed them so he could absorb their abilities. Uh, uh, and he and Crow broke his things, and he is not amused. So just by when he's just by saying that, Crow doesn't even talk back. Although it's worth noting that just like Siggy, Crow seems to have a permanent sadistic grin to him. Overall, it is also revealed that uh, Crow, that and Crow has a. Apparently an appetite for humans, saying that uh, when are you going to feed me enough to actually fill me up? This seems to suggest that uh, Siggy managed to get on Crow's good side by promising him chaos or destruction. It is also revealed that another reason why Dead and Crow is here is because um, he is meant to guard uh, Idinia 
uh, to uh, or the planet un when the Eden Zero comes because the Eden's One cannot fight back currently, which scares me a little bit because we see it uh, hooked into a system which Siggy is using for a certain calculation to to locate Mother. Oh no 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 no! Do not let the bad guy find her first. It is still not revealed how he, how what kind of personality Mother have, but even so, I don't think she will. I don't think, uh, I, th I think Mother doesn't really care about who is good or who is evil. Whoever locates her will get their wish. So, yeah, that is very concerning of it all. So, Dead and Crow is here because, uh, because he is supposed to be extra muscle. So, this is Dead and Crow, a mindless... A brute who likes to really destroy things and eat humans. You know, he reminds me a lot of those Xenoblade Chronicles uh, villains. Those uh, specialized mechons, so to speak. Specifically the one called Sword. Uh, brute with uh, an appetite for human flesh. Or in that game's case, Holmes flesh. Did you know that game? I never played it, but I know that game because I saw every single walk walkthrough. Now, back to the chapter. Then we see Lablia talking to to Rebecca, where it's actually revealed that they're trying to find Mother. She's also not... Uh, she's a little bit surprised that she is uh, going entering a battle when she could barely hold her own against Lablia. But if we're to be honest, I think uh, Rebecca is held back. And, more, and basically, she's more of a gunner. And now even has... Uh, and now even has... Uh, Ether Gear will surprise her. It is also revealed that Couchpo protects the kitchen and is now the stomach of Eden's. <laughs> I guess that makes sense. La Bella seems to have uh, genuinely changed much of it all, but we'll still not know if she will survive. Then we get to the strategy meeting where uh, El Elsie is uh, enter talking to them with communications. She is not so very amused to seeing an interstellar union army, but I'm also just as I am, because it's very clear that Holy will do something that um, will definitely put the gang in, at risk. But given but the plan they have at, right now, even that is a risk, because something tells me it will not go as smoothly as they think they will. But I'll get to that when I get to that. Holy just insists that since they since Siggy has a powerful army, because this seems also to suggest that while the skeleton army seems to be mooks, it is also revealed that he may very well have even more upgraded machines. So yeah, Siggy Siggy has always been a legitimate threat, but now his army is, it really is that massive. He he has the numerical advantage. So uh, Holy is willing to aid with her midnight fleet. Let's hope that. So the breathing is, they will enter Leonard Defense Zone. But once they do it, they will undoubtedly be attacked by thousands of unarmed starships. Uh, so Holy and Elsie will, will communicate uh, and break through, the, make sure that the Eden Zero can break through the ranks. While Holy will communicate through the Eden Zero. So while the enemy is distracted, the Eden Zero and Elsie's flagship, will, will, which will house um, Elsie herself, will split into two teams. The Crow attacks uh, attack team made of Starfighters and the course of Jishantil will proceeding on foot. Meaning that one team will attack Crow, another will attack, uh, try to attack uh, Siggy. Elsie is shocked to hear that Dead and Crow is there and even wonders if the Gears cannot ignore him. However, um, Holy only agreed to help them if they help her. Besides, Crow is gi gigantic, titanic, so to speak. They cannot ignore him. And now that it's even revealed that he is there to personally destroy the Eden Zero, yeah, they have to face him. So either way, they are the close, the core subju subjugation team will engage Siege's army in close combat, but uh, where they will find Leonard's main server and destroy Leonard itself. However, Siege likely will have a plan, so they will want to send a signal in the core, 
And there is where the secret weapon happens. After a very, very long time, we are getting back to the chron chronophage. They will summon one. Apparently, a chronophage is, uh, will pass nearby. And their plan is to ram it into Leonard. Meaning that since it eats time, it will eat Leonard's time. Likely erasing all of uh, S Siggy's army, as well as Siggy himself. Uh, and then it's actually revealed something that may actually have been suggested at uh, uh, some time ago. Which to me is actually kind of scary, but it does make sense somehow. And it seems that, uh, as I, s I don't know if I said this in a previous review, but uh, I, I th sometimes I actually did wonder, is there a connection to uh, Rebecca's ether gear and the chronophage? And while not confirmed, it did seem to suggest that Rebecca does have a connection to the Chronophage. Because Norma was attacked when Rebecca used her Leaper powers as a very young one. And Rebecca was a Guilds too. This seems to suggest that Chronophage is actively chasing Rebecca. Here in this, of course, uh, Rebecca begins to fall into great despair. No, but as... Uh, as Hermito suggests, it seems to suggest that uh, uh, the Chronophage attacks planets whose, t whose stream of time have been jeopardized. And since uh, Rebecca time jumped a lot on Norma, the time zone was very different. And uh, as she did it as well in at Guilds, it also happened. However, it is even implied that, that, that Rebecca is not the cause of the reason for that. Because Blue Garden has not been attacked yet. And, and neither has Foresta. Or even the, the Belial Goel where she literally whirled to or everything else for that matter. Of course, uh, even Hermito even uh, suggests that it may be even attack a planet where someone from a distant stability of time have visited. Likewise, seeing that he is see an alternate version of the Professor Wise and he left Norma the Norma planet that was already attacked long long ago. The Chronophage may even chase Wise because he is also a stability of time that left the planet. That uh, so it's not exactly confirmed that Rebecca is the cause why a chronophage is summoned. Just suggested that, that there is a connection to Rebecca's ether, uh, ether gear or Rebecca herself and the chronophage, but that is not true. So, uh, so um, even though she does get a, l gets out of that, she do hardens herself and says that she will want to do. So they will walk right into danger, especially if the chronophage is summoned, and then they will leave and let it destroy Leonard. Uh, where Rebecca will activate the ether gears plan at the planet's core, and the ether whales will act as a signal to the chronophage. They call it Operation Planet Eater, and that will destroy Siggy. Or will it? Because I end this chapter by saying. Why do I have a very strange suspicion that this is all part of Siggy's plan? And no, 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 I'm not saying someone is a betrayer. No, that's not what I'm saying. Hopefully that's not the case. What I'm saying is Siggy always seems to have a plan. And if you think about it, look at his two ether gears. What are they? Well, they are gravity. The power of gravity from Satan's gravity. Wormhole, basically the power of space because he can warp space and warp himself. Basically, gravity and space. What is he lacking? Why, time. If he has time, space and gravity at his hands, then he basically controls the very essence of cosmos itself. Because many, especially in fiction, usually categorize time, space and gravity as the same thing. That's not science, okay? That's just sometimes what stories do. So why am I getting the slight suspicion that even if they can summon a chronophage, Siggy will just somehow absorb it? Remember what he once said to Poseidon Arrow? Mother, machines, the chronophage, 
it's all connected. So I'm just saying, isn't it a very strong possibility that Siggy can somehow turn this to his advantage? Well, I don't know. It's a risky plan. But if the if the chronophage power is absolute and Siggy cannot absorb it, then yes, this is the perfect way to eliminate all of his army. Even so, I wonder. So yeah, this is basically a setup chapter. We saw the dead, the, the dangerous brute that is dead and crow. We see that uh, Siggy is trying to locate Mother using the Eden's one for her calculations. Hope they can at least stop that. The breathing is there, the team is there, the war on Leonard's is about to happen. Well, I'm not really excited, I am more actually scared. Still, I hope it will be something. Give me your thoughts if you have any.